The Frazier Museum started off as a dream of Owsley Brown Frazier, a great Kentucky philanthropist and businessman. Mr. Frazier has always had a lifelong interest in arms, but in the greater picture of history as well. In about 2000, he had a small display of some of his materials at the Kentucky Historical Museum in Frankfurt. And the success of this really prompted his idea, what would it be like if we were to build a museum dedicated to arms and put it in downtown Louisville? It also coincided very nicely with some plans on the part of the Royal Armories Museum in the United Kingdom to have a North American presence. And that same year, Mr. Fraser met with representatives from the Royal Armories and began to conceive the idea of this combination museum in downtown Louisville. In 2001, a contract was signed, and at that point, the museum began to grow its staff and the collection and bring the two museums together with an opening target date originally of 2003. Time showed, the, however, that it was just not possible to put together a museum in just two years. Nonetheless, in less than four years from start to finish, this museum is open to the public. I like to refer to the Fraser Museum as being two museums under one roof. The floor that we're on right now is the third floor, or Royal Armories USA as it's referred to. And what we've been able to work out with them is a series of regularly changing displays with a timeline that parallels that of the Fraser collection. The Royal Armories materials in Leeds go as far back as the Bronze Age and up to the present, but we wanted to focus on what would make us unique in North America, and that is the period from approximately the 11th century, beginning at the Battle of Hastings, and ending at a point that was more or less contemporary with the Fraser's cutoff point of around 1900. So the displays on this level go from the Battle of Hastings in 1066 to the Boxer Rebellion in 1900. The Royal Armory's floor includes eight tableaus. These are life-size vignettes, as it were, that focus on a particular battle of importance in British history. These are full-size, very accurately constructed reproductions of these small vignettes in British times and history. The one that is behind me is the tableau that depicts the Battle of Balaclava, better known as the Charge of the Light Brigade. And the tableau itself depicts that moment where a British lancer's horse has been struck and he and his horse are crashing to the ground. And a hussar, another type of cavalryman, is leaping over the falling men in an attempt, an attempt to get at the Russian guns. The Fraser Museum considers itself first and foremost a historical museum. It is a museum of arms to be sure, but it uses arms to tell a historical story. But it also wanted to tell this story in a, let's say, less than expected way. It wanted to have a living, breathing component as well. And that is where our interpretation program comes in. And Mr. Cooper has worked with us to bring in other actors who can be trained in historical presentations, who will know how to stick with a script, who can help work with us to present these little vignettes, approximately 15 minutes in length, that depict the first person's story of specific individuals. We have a soldier from the English Civil War. We're working on others right now, a soldier of the American Army at the Battle of Trenton, and a survivor from one of the units that was at Little Bighorn. We're hoping to have some 25 to 30 of these programs in place by early in 2005. And right now, they're one of the more popular aspects of our particular programming, especially the Elizabethan Swordmaster, in which Mr. Cooper and another individual sort of recreate those uh, sections from Shakespeare that talk about the use of swords and weapons in that 16th century British context. Now, as you can see, with this style of fighting, with these types of weapons, 
There are very few rules. The main object is to win by any means possible. The Fraser Museum, of course, has its own primary collection, and the focus in that is largely on American arms from the earliest times to approximately 1910. Again, when Mr. Fraser was assembling his private collection, he had a great interest in those pieces that told a historical story or that belonged to famous individuals. And to our mind, uh, one of the most significant groups of materials that we have are the things that relate to the 26th president, Theodore Roosevelt. We have, for example, his famous Holland & Holland Company double rifle that was carried by him in his African safari in 1909-1910. It's the so-called big stick, which Roosevelt and his son both referred to as the blast of which was more powerful and they felt more, uh, more fear of than the charge of a bull elephant. So the Fraser Collection is the only place where one can come in and see the dress sword of Josiah Bartlett, one of our founding fathers, where it can see a bow, quiver, and arrow that are attributed to the Apache warrior Geronimo, or a set of Colt pistols that are said to have been owned by George Armstrong Custer. It's always difficult to figure out what are the highlights of any collection. In terms of the Fraser Collection, I would have to say our whole Arms of Distinction Gallery, which is filled with wonderful art-oriented objects that really, truly show that arms can be high art, is a group that I would highly recommend. I think one of the points that I would like to stress with the public is that they really need to come here. Obviously, the more visitors we get, the happier we are. But I think people really need to look beyond the basic subject matter at hand. We're not a gun museum. We are a museum of arms, but one that uses arms to tell the American story as it was shaped by its European roots. I think that when people come here, they appreciate what we're trying to do. They recognize the educational mission. They re recognize the value that it has, not only in enriching their own lives, but how it can enrich the lives of their children, how they'll they can go away with a better appreciation of how we have become the America that we have.